Oh, wonderful. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, as it is 9.05, we're going to um, get started on our presentation in just one moment. I just want to remind you all that we um, welcome you to introduce yourselves um, with your name and location and what brought you to today's event in our chat. Um, in just one moment, um, we are going to have everyone muted um, while Nina um, offers her presentation. There will be opportunities to ask questions in the chat and at the end of the presentation in um, our Q&A session. We do recommend that you view the presentation in speaker mode. If you go up to the right hand, if you put your cursor over the right hand corner of your viewing window and click on view, um, then just click on uh, speaker view. Um, and I think we are all set then. I'm going to hand this over to our Boston Early Music Festival Executive Director, Kathleen Fay. Great, Shannon, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Friends on the East Coast of the United States, very, very good early morning to our friends on the West Coast of the United States. A good afternoon to our friends in Europe, and goodness, a good evening to our friends in Africa. I am Kathy Fay, as Shannon mentioned, the very proud executive director of the Boston Early Music Festival, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this very special interactive cross-continental event entitled Engaging Communities, Recorders Beyond Borders. We're so pleased that you're here. By way of brief introduction, the Boston Early Music Festival, or BEMF, has offered a variety of wonderful family day programs at our biennial festivals and exhibitions for decades, as well as provided in-school programs for Boston public school children. <clears throat> Dedicated to inspiring young children and sharing the wonders and joys of early music and historically informed performance, all of us at Banff are motivated by this important aspect of our mission. In fact, my own <clears throat> lifelong passion and dedication to music began with childhood flute and piano lessons. I feel so lucky and so blessed to have been exposed to different musical instruments when I was a kid. And I was especially lucky to attend a public school where music was an important part of the curriculum. I was also very fortunate to have some amazing music teachers throughout my elementary, junior high, and high school years. I firmly believe that the spark lit by devoted music teachers inspires young people to grow up enjoying music, participating in music making, develop a lifelong appreciation for music, and also cultivate an awareness of what it means to support the arts. And speaking of excellent music teachers, I'm overjoyed to introduce and welcome Nina Stern to the Boston Early Music Festival team of artistic leaders. Nina, as many of you know, is an internationally acclaimed recorder player and classical clarinetist. She has appeared as a soloist and principal player with orchestras all over the world, and she can be heard on many recordings. Nina is a faculty member at Juilliard's Historical Performance Program, and she is founder and artistic director of School Sounds, an award-winning music education project serving public school children and under-resourced communities in the United States and abroad. Nina, it is my great pleasure to turn the program over to you. Kathy, thank you so much. It's a great honor for me to be here today. And welcome to all of you that have joined us. We are thrilled that you've joined us for this event, connecting children from across the US and in Kenya and all of us here together today. I'd like to begin by introducing you to School Sounds and the work that we have done to connect children and communities through music, both in New York City, where I am based, and in other parts of the world. Here's a short introduction to our New York City programs. Three, two, one, go. 
Each time I come to school on Thursdays, I'm always excited in the morning because of music class. We love school sounds more and more, which is very exciting. So with school sounds, we believe that making music is pivotal to childhood development, as well as education across the board. We have three things that we like to focus on. One is introducing children to playing a musical instrument. The second thing we like to focus on is playing music in an ensemble. From the first day that we walk into a classroom, we're creating an ensemble. The third focus of our program is the global aspect. We like to bring in music from all over the world. I can share uh, the traditions that I know and they also share with me the traditions that they have. For example, I have some uh, students from China and they sometimes come to me and say like, oh, I have this song and maybe we can sing it and then they show it to us and we learn it together. Music and art in general is something that draws you know, the whole of humanity together and that's very important. There are people from all over the world in New York City. It's one of the most beautiful things about the city and therefore I wanted these children perhaps to learn about their own culture through the music, about other people's cultures through the music. I have yet to come upon a musical culture that doesn't have some form of flute and some form of drum. So most music is easily adapted to the instruments that we're teaching these children. We are helping children to discover what it means to make music with an instrument, what it means to make music with a group of children, and what it means to communicate through music, what can be learned about the world through music. I'll see children becoming enthusiastic when their classmates can achieve something that they weren't able to achieve earlier, when the group sounds good, when it's a good performance of a piece, the kids are really excited. We currently have programs in 29 New York City public schools serving well over 7,000 students. Throughout the pandemic, we were able to provide free video-based programming as well as remote live sessions, including recorder instruction with our teaching artists. We're now gearing up to be back in person in the fall, though we do intend to increase our video-based offerings hoping to make them available to more and more children here in New York City and in other parts of the country and the world as well. The cross-cultural focus of School Sounds found a natural expansion in 2010 when I was invited by a local humanitarian organization to introduce the School Sounds music program to children living in Kibera, a giant informal settlement in Nairobi, Kenya. Since that time, we have also partnered with organizations working with Syrian refugees in Jordan and in the East African country of Burundi. We will go back to Kenya in a few moments, in person as well, but I wanted to focus on Burundi for a few minutes as our work there clearly illustrates something fundamental to our program. In all of the communities that we work in, we emphasize the richness of the children's own musical traditions. In the words of my amazing colleague, Matilda Giampietro, whom you will see briefly in the next video clip, kids need to see the wisdom that is their own culture. Burundi suffered a tragic civil war from 1993 to 2005, in which hundreds of thousands of lives were lost. I traveled there for the first time in 2013 together with an international team of musicians, including Matilda, as well as Reinemarie Verhagen, professor of recorder at the Royal Conservatory in The Hague. Matilda is with us here today, I believe. We partnered with Village Health Works, an organization which, in the wake of the war, worked to create what has become an extraordinary health center in a rural part of the country, overlooking beautiful Lake Tanganyika. 
Here's a very short clip from a film that was made during our first visit there. This place in Burundi has understood the relationship between music and physical health, mental health, emotional stability. People need to eat, people need their health, people need to be well nourished. These are aspects of the lives of community members here that are being attended to by Village Health Works. But people need more than that. We're trying to feed their spirits through our music. teaching a child how to persevere when something is difficult. You do something once and they can't do it. You do it another three or four or five or six or ten times and ultimately they can do it. The progress has been really extraordinary. We traveled there to share our expertise in Western music using the recorder as a tool to introduce the children and their teachers to our music. We were so impressed by the incredible richness of their musical traditions, which the Village Health Works community was working hard to revive. These traditional arts had been interrupted during the Civil War. I'd like to give you a taste of some of what we saw. In the first clip, you will see young girls practicing traditional dancing. times I've seen that clip and every time it just gives me such such joy. Uh, the boys express themselves through a drumming tradition in Burundi. We will show a montage of three short clips. In the first you will see the youth and their teachers carrying the drums on their heads to a practice session. Each of these drums weighs 80 pounds by the way. In the second a young boy tells the story of planting and reaping fields. In the third clip, you will see master drummers communicating with their young pupils, teaching them through call and response.
The songs that accompany both the dances and the drumming use ancient melodies and rhythms which are adapted to new texts. The texts are relevant to the work that Village HealthWorks is doing for the community. Maybe the texts are about birth control or HIV prevention, agricultural initiatives, nutrition. Children become a voice for the organization as they take their performances out to the community. It's extraordinary. It's very much a living tradition. And the children are the voice of the organization. It's just wonderful. It gave me immense pleasure to see where our traditions could meet. I played some of my music. I'm a recorder player steeped in early music, as, as Kathy so put so in such lovely terms when she introduced, introduced me. I played some of my music for the master drummers. We saw which pieces could work well with their rhythmic patterns, and this was the result a 14th century Italian estampi, a dance, a medieval dance, accompanied by Burundian drums. The dancing, by the way, was entirely spontaneous. Um, master musicians were invited to Village Health Works so that they could share their musical expertise with the children of the community. This next montage of two short clips will show the master musicians singing beautiful ancient songs. In the first, you will see the thumb piano, the ikembe, and the harp, the ananga. In the second, you will see the Burundian berimbau, called the Umuduri. three times. As the third visit came to a close, we organized a final performance in a nearby town. Again, we aimed to combine our traditions with theirs as we all made music together. In the first clip, you will see the children performing a 13th century Spanish song, a Cantiga de Santa Maria, which we had taught them during our visit. We added drums, inanga, and umuduri to the ensemble. Thank <laughs> you. 
forgot to unmute there for a second. Uh, the last clip that we're going to show you from Burundi shows the children performing a favorite East African gospel song, Mambo Sawa. They're going to perform on recorders and traditional instruments. Many people in the crowd knew the song. This is a song that's well known in Kenya as well, all, as I said, all of East Africa. And the people in the crowd were invited to sing along. Back to Kenya now. Our programs in Kenya are robust. We now have thriving music programs in four schools. We partner in that country with Crossing Thresholds, a wonderful organization dedicated to building and sustaining elementary schools in Kibera, as well as a boarding high school outside of Nairobi. You are about to meet our two extraordinary Kenyan music teachers Jacob Saya and Julius Odiambo, and 60 amazing young musicians from three of our schools, Facing the Future, Garden of Hope, and Center of Hope, who have joined to make a music team for today's performance. Do we have our Kenyan friends with us? Uh, connectivity, of course, is difficult with Kibera, so I'm hoping that we'll have them with us shortly. I see someone connecting to audio. Let's keep going, and um, we'll we'll have someone alert me once once our Kenyan friends can say hello. I'd like to show you in the meantime a part of a film that we produced about our music program in Kibera. Are you guys ready? Okay, we play together. One, 
a world in which all people have access to the transformative experience of making music together. Music transforms people by connecting them, by creating community, by creating the opportunity to be creative. And music just has a way of touching people's souls, bringing them to a place where they can access their feelings and communicate them and be creative uh, through music. I could say 101 million uh, things about how music has impacted the children, but I'll just say a few. One, uh, it's built the confidence of the, uh, of the children especially how they express themselves. Uh, number two, it's given the children an opportunity just to express themselves and be who they are naturally. And number three, uh, I believe in what we term as uh, individual differences. And so the music program has catered for the, uh, the individuals who are talented in music. The music in Fafu School began in 2012. Our first participation in the national level in 2014, we became number seven in the Republic of Kenya. The following year, 2015, number two. 2016, 2017, 2018, we have maintained number one. Now, far as a school, we're in the map, we're in the world map. <laughs> first prize in the music competition, I felt really happy, like I, you just feel so much special because you try your best and win, so you feel excited, so you start believing in yourself and you, now, you can now believe that you can do anything and try new things so you don't get af afraid anymore. The program was born at Fafu and it has spread to other schools. When I'm working with the children and their teachers uh, here in Kibera, uh, I feel as though I get back at least 100% of what I give to them. They're inherently musical, I feel. They're inherently poetic. Kenyan traditional music is uh, varied and beautiful and wonderful. I learn from them, I learn from their music, and incidentally I try to take that music back to the children that we work with in New York City. That's very important. We try to connect in many ways uh, between the stu our students in New York City and our students in Kenya. Before we show the incredible video that Jacob, Julius, our two wonderful music teachers and their remarkable students produced, especially for the Boston Early Music Festival and today's event, I'm going to see, I believe they have been able to join us. 
and we were going to invite them to say hello again. We're going to try. There they are. Hello. We're so happy to see you. Or we were happy to see you briefly. Let's go. Ah, there they are again. Hello again. I think audio may be too much to ask for while we're waiting for them to, um, to unmute. Why don't we go ahead and show this remarkable performance video that they produced for us today, though it's pretty wonderful to see their faces live. Let's go ahead, Brian, and show their performance video. My name is Jacob Saya, School Sounds Music Director in Kenya. I want to welcome you to this music moment as we play you music from Kenya. Welcome to our music.
Wow. Just an amazing performance. I'm so uh, immensely impressed and proud of these kids and their teachers. Um, as you can imagine, connectivity with um, Kibera is really, really difficult. By the way, this is something that um, Crossing Thresholds is working hard to, to fix so that the, that the schools will have better connectivity in the future. Um, but um, I'm incredibly uh, proud of them and happy that they were able to produce this beautiful performance video, for, especially for today's event. In preparation for today's program, we also asked recorder teachers from around the United States to suggest some students who might be interested in recording two songs for the occasion. I'd like to thank the teachers who helped prepare students for this recording. Mio Aoki, Vicki Beckman, who I believe is with us today, Sabine Endrichkeit, Laura Faber, Isabella Pagel, Julianne Pape, who I know is with us as well, and Karen Robbins. And last, but certainly not least, a School Sounds teaching artist, Ruri Patterson, who led the collective practice sessions with me and produced the video that we will show shortly. Can we have Ru say hello? Ru, are you there to say hello? Hello and good morning from New York City. Uh, it's good to see all of all of you guys and all of the young students that participated in the in the video that we that we made it was a pleasure to hang out with them teach them and edit their wonderful playing into the video that you're about to see i hope you enjoy it rue has also traveled to kenya with me he's he's well known to our kenyan uh students and by the way um also helped them with the arrangement for the the song that they performed for us today so uh, thank you, Rue, for all of your incredible work. Students from Boston, Brooklyn, New York, Montclair, New Jersey, Chicago, and Seattle joined us for this project. Do we have some of them with us today? I know it's very early still in Seattle, so some students may not have joined us yet. But if you are with us and hear me call your name, please unmute so that you can say hello. Carl, are you there? We're going to give everyone a little bit of time to say hello. If we don't see you, we'll, I'm going to move on to the next one. Coco, are you there? Have, can, we, can we spotlight Coco if she's there? I'm going to keep moving on. David, do we have David? Hey, there's, Hi. Oh, here's Parker. Hey, Parker. Hi. Hi. Hi, Lindsay. Anybody else? Do we have? Hi. Hey. Oh, hi, Jachi. How are you? Hello. Nice to see you. How about Maddie or Lola or Maple? Maya, Sylvia. Is Sylvia. Hi. Hi. Oh, Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia from Chicago. Hi. Uh, Paul, do I see Paul? Oh, Carl and Paul are here, but can't unmute to say <laughs> hi. Hello. Oh, there they are. Hello. Good morning. It's very, thanks for joining us at this very early hour in Seattle. Do we have Nia or Teddy or Zev? Anyone else that wants to say hi? Let's move on to their video. These wonderful Hi. young musicians. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're going to move on now to the to show your video. Um, you're going to see them perform another Cantiga de Santa Maria, Quien a Omagen. And in honor of our Kenyan friends, they've prepared a popular East African song, Malaika. Enjoy.
Mariana Mwenzio Nashindwa na malisi na we Ninge tuwa malaika Nashindwa na malisi na we A round of muted applause. Um, all of our musicians from all of our, from both continents worked incredibly hard for today's performances, and uh, I my heart is full seeing what they've accomplished. That brings our program to a close. I know that some of you have questions that you've been putting in the chat, and we do have time to take some of those questions. Um, I, our moderators have been um, looking over the chat to sort of collect the questions, but if you have them now, please go ahead and put them in the chat. And I believe that Shannon is going to be asking them for you. Anybody have questions? No questions yet. I see, I see lots of wonderful remarks in the chat, which I'm enjoying. How old were the players? One, one person is asking. Um, the players ranged from, I believe, eight until, oh, I'm wondering how old Esme is, maybe 12 or 13. I'm doing a wild guess. We didn't, uh, that, that's, that's about the, the 14, from eight to 14. And so Esme, Nina, we have a question um, asking, how do you fund your programs? and how can people support your work? Thank you, that's always a wonderful question. Um, I, I believe that Kathy is gonna speak to how people can support the work that we're doing collectively. Um, and our, our work is funded by, um, uh, so the School Sounds work is funded both by government agencies um, by uh, foundations and by lots of loving individual support. You can visit our website, of course, but but you know, for for today, I, I'm you know, we're 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 hoping we're not hoping we're we're intending to to continue this wonderful um, collaboration with BEMF, and as I said, Kathy Fay will be speaking to that in just a moment. Um, yeah, question about language in Kibera. So, um, uh, among other things, these children are, are amazing in that most of them, almost all of them, speak three languages. So they will speak often um, a, a traditional language of their own, and they speak Swan. So the two um, languages that are used formally in Kenya are Swahili, which is a language used in all of East Africa, and English. So we're able to communicate with them in English for the most part. We try to learn a little bit of Swahili, but our Swahili is not nearly as good as their English. Am I seeing other questions? So we have another question um, asking if the students have an opportunity to exchange between Kenya and the USA and develop relationships that way. Yeah, we've done quite uh, we've done quite a few um, exchanges with the Kenyan children. For, you know, there are groups of New York City 
public school children that have uh, learned about their friends in Kenya, that have donated instruments to them, that have made new cases for the instruments, um, that have raised money to purchase new instruments for them. And we have done live events like this in the past where we will connect a classroom uh, full of uh, American children to our Kenyan students as well. So um, there are a variety of ways and, and you know, I mustn't forget, of course, the fact that the biggest exchange is through music. So um, our Kenyan friends have shared a lot of their music with us that we bring back to our American students. That is a, a, a richness, a rich tradition that they share with us. So we have another question asking what most surprised you about your time in Africa? What most surprised me? Oh, so many things surprised me about my time in Africa. Um, you know, Kibera is a very um, harsh place, as, as you may have gleaned from, from our short film. Um, what never ceases to amaze me is the incredible spirit and of the children and their teachers and their their love the love that they share with us the love that they have for the music uh, i think that's the thing that that surprises me the most though of course i could also speak about the incredible richness of the landscape and the um the animal kingdom and it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful country. Okay. So apparently we do have Jacob on Isabel's phone. Shannon, are you able to locate that so that Jacob could say hello and say a few words to us? Rue, if you're seeing that, could you, yeah, is Isabel, not Isabella. Rue, can you, there. There's Jacob. Yay. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm on you. Uh... Hear you, Jacob. Thank you, Nina. Um, oh, it's it's actually evening here, so probably good morning or good afternoon from the states. Uh, this is uh, Jacob, um, the School Sounds Music Director in Kenya, working with uh, music uh, students in Kibera. Uh, in our team, we have uh, three schools that are working with us in the program. We have Fafu Education Center. We have Garden of Hope, Mobjab, and then we have a Center of Hope, uh, all working uh, with us together in the music program. And just behind me is the entire battalion here. The ones that you saw play the wonderful video right there. I think everyone can have a chance to see them. Um, yeah. Give, give them a chance to shout hello to us, Jacob. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Nina. And so uh, with me also, I work with Mr. Julius. Um, he helps in uh, being one of the instructors. So we've been working with these children for the past couple of years, and we've been becoming better and better uh, by every other time we get the chance to play music. And so we appreciate so much for this chance and golden opportunity to be part of this uh, music celebration moment in this festival. And so we are glad and much, much grateful. So we continue following as we enjoy this. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, everyone, for your beautiful music. Thank you. Uh, uh, I also, uh, yeah, so let's just give a chance for the, um, do, we, do we have other questions? For me. We have uh, someone asking how the students are selected for the program. So um, I, I might need them to, so is this for the Kenyan program or for the, our program at Benf today? Do, do we know specifically? Well, I'll answer both. So the, uh, for, for Kenya, Jacob could, could also speak to this, but what we try to do is introduce all the children to music uh, when they reach a certain age. And then at a certain point, because um, by the way, this music team um, have been national um, uh, competition winners four years in a row. They've taken first place in the entire nation of Kenya with, in a national music festival. Um, they work incredibly hard. So what Jacob and Julius do ultimately out of the children um, is select those that are most engaged and um, most serious about their playing and forms a music team. And that's the team that each, each school actually sends a team to the music festival. It's been uh, postponed now because of the pandemic twice. In fact, it was postponed last or last summer. It was canceled entirely. Now it's my understanding that this typically the National Music Festival is in August, but it's been postponed to December. So they'll be working hard on that. I'm sure. Any more questions that you're seeing Shannon? That may be um, all the questions that we have. And so I, at this point in time, am going to, Jacob, I'm gonna ask you one more question. Did, um, did were your students able to see Malaika? There are the uh, American students playing Malaika for them? W were you able to see it? Just give me a thumbs up. Anyway, we'll be sharing the video with, yes, fantastic, because they learned it for you. It's a fantastic tune. They very much enjoyed learning it. Um, uh, and at this point, uh, I'm going to send it back to you, Kathy. Words fail me. I am absolutely blown away. Fantastic. What a wonderful, wonderful celebration. I'm completely inspired and astonished by what I've seen and heard and learned today. Wow. My sincere thanks, Nina, to you for organizing this amazing documentary and these performances we just heard. My thanks to all of the teachers involved, as well as those who assisted in recruiting young recorder players. Special thanks to my wonderful colleagues on the BEMF staff, especially Shannon Canavan, Brian Stewart, and Elizabeth Hardy for their invaluable assistance producing this program. But most of all, my thanks to the many, many talented young recorder players joining us from all over the world. I loved hearing everyone play together and I cannot wait until we meet again. Motivated by our work together during the past few months since Nina Stern was appointed as the Director of Community Engagement, we've been discussing ways to build upon the success of today's program well into the future. Recognizing the many setbacks, tragic losses, and dreadful consequences of the global COVID pandemic that we are all still struggling to defeat I believe one important outcome is that we've learned to appreciate the importance of connecting and communicating and interacting with one another. 
Today's program is an excellent example of the extraordinary power of such communication and connection. And I know Nina agrees that our partnership will yield many more memorable experiences and accomplishments. Among our ambitious plans, we, I wanna say hope to, but we will establish the Banff Youth Ensemble preparatory to a debut at the June 2023 Boston Early Music Festival. Our goal is to gather together young recorder players and string players and percussion players from far and wide, including perhaps some of the young musicians participating today from Boston and New York and New Jersey and Seattle and Kenya. We are confident that through the joyful collaboration of music making, our engaging communities program will create bonds and build community for the next generation of music lovers and beyond. We have many wonderful ideas and we invite your ideas too. If you'd like to support our engaging communities program, we'd be thrilled and honored. To do so, please visit the BEMF website, BEMF.org slash support. And I hope you will spread the word of today's engaging community programs by sharing this program, this link with your friends and family and colleagues. And finally, from all of us at the Boston Early Music Festival, thank you for watching. If you'd like, you all would, can uh, unmute yourselves and take a moment to say hi to each other and uh, hi to Nina and hi to some of uh, our see. colleagues that are on the call. Hello. Hi. Hi, hi Maple. Hi. 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 Thank you. Okay, hi from Kibera in Kenya, guys. Hello. 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 Hi, Jacob. Hi, everyone. Hello. Nice to see you. Hi, Jacob. Hi. Hi. So good to see you, Jacob. Jachi's only 